Good morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral. My name's Randy Hollerith. I'm the Dean of the Cathedral. And as always, we're so glad that you've chosen to join us for this brief service of morning prayer. Let us begin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Our canticle over this morning is Canticle 8, the Song of Moses. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. This is my God, and I will praise him, the God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathom, fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and a worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand, and the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession the resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord of heaven and earth, of life and love, of peace and hope, it is in you that I live and move and have my being. I greet you, I salute you, I thank you for this new day, for this chance to be alive. Because of you, I am both forgiven and free. I sense your gentle touch as you help me up and out of my early morning fits and starts. Please, dear Lord, open my mind, my eyes, my heart, my hands. Help me to see and experience you in all the corners of my life, in all dimensions of your creation. Please continue to push me and pull me so that I can better know and love you. O oh Lord, hang in and hang tough with me and those for whom I pray, because we need your help and your courage we need your understanding and your grace. We need your perspective and peace. We need your patience and your healing. And more than anything, we need you. Amen. The Collect for this day. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading for today comes from the sixth chapter of John's Gospel, beginning at the 52nd verse. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, 
so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. Here ends the lesson. Some years ago, a member of my congregation sent me a wonderful email that I have long saved, and I want to share it with you today. It starts, Dear Randy, I had to pass this on to you. On Christmas Eve, my grandson Bruce, age four and a half, had been very interested in the service and had been asking a lot of questions about Jesus. He was very aware that it was Jesus' birthday the next day. We were sitting in the second pew, right in the center of the church, and after taking communion, he crawled over to sit beside me near the center aisle. As the congregation was coming down the aisle for communion, he spoke to each of the children. He didn't speak to the adults, just the children that passed by our pew. And to each one he said, are you hungry? You're going to get the body of Jesus, and it's yummy. Wow, my friend goes on to write, I was blown away. That really touched my soul. We had a blessed Christmas, and I hope you did too. Isn't that wonderful? Out of the mouths of babes, as they say, are you hungry? You're going to get the body of Jesus, and it's yummy. Are you hungry? It is only the divine life that can ultimately satisfy our spiritual and our existential hunger. It is only by feeding on Christ, literally and figuratively, that we can discover the depths and riches of the Christian faith. For Episcopalians, Anglicans, Catholics, the Orthodox, and a few others, the Eucharist is not just a memorial. What do I mean by that? Well, when we break the bread and bless the cup, we are not just remembering what Jesus did at the Last Supper. We are not just recreating that meal the way we might recreate the Battle of Bunker Hill. No, for us the Eucharist is much more. Yes, we are reminding ourselves about what Jesus did on the night he was betrayed, when he gathered with his friends for that final meal right before he was arrested. But more importantly, we believe that in the Eucharist, Christ is literally present in the bread and the wine that we share. Once consecrated, that unleavened bread and, in our case, port wine, become the body and blood of Christ. We call that real presence. Yes, they're still bread and wine, but now they are more than bread and wine. They are also Christ. And so when we take part in this sacred meal, we are literally, we believe, taking Christ inside of us. We are literally being fed by our Lord and of our Lord. That is why the Eucharist is the central act of worship for us in the Episcopal Church and for many other Christian churches. When we share in the Eucharist, we are being strengthened, loved, empowered, and forgiven by the living presence of Jesus Christ as his life is being made a part of our life. Many people want to believe that true religion is all about the spiritual, that the physical is unimportant. It's our souls that matter most, not our bodies. The 
body, the material, is only temporary. It is the spirit that lasts forever. But never forget that Christianity says something different. Our faith says that God is in the physical, the material. Through the incarnation, God literally became and is a part of this physical world, and there is no union with the spiritual that does not involve the physical. In another way, we might say that matter matters to God. So, come to Christ's table and be fed. There is no other meal like it. And if you are hungry, it is indeed the food that truly satisfies. Amen. Now, would you join with me as we pray the words our Savior taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you alone know the secrets of our hearts. You alone understand the burdens we carry and the pain that we bear. As we make our way through this life, through this day, we need your healing grace. Grant us not only those things that we ask for, but more importantly, give us those good things that we need. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours. On this morning, we lift up to you all those who are on our hearts and our minds. Remembering especially the people of Ukraine. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Close today with a prayer by Alan Houghton. O Lord, of every body, every time, every place, of everything I sense and see and feel and hear, I thank you that I am still alive and kicking. I thank you for my life, my love, my liberty, for my health and my well-being. I thank you for what I hold in my heart and my hands today, for your incredible creation, for those I love and for those who love me. I thank you for this chance to be useful and creative for this day with all its unfolding challenges. I thank you for the wondrous gift of yourself in Jesus and especially for your promise of a life everlasting. And last but certainly not least, I thank you for listening to my scattered prayers this day. Thank you, gracious and loving and patient Lord. Thank you, amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always.